I found a super simple fix for my compressor. It was leaking like crazy around the back of this uh, pressure switch, right? All right, do you see uh, these little torque heads right here? That's what I'm talking about, screwing down tighter to help put more pressure on the diaphragm to, to slow down or maybe stop the leaks. I only managed to drastically slow down my leak. Maybe you can fix yours completely. And uh, you know, there's two on the bottom also, so four total. And, and once you put a little more clamping pressure on there, you might be good to go. So try that first. So before you go tearing into all this, try tightening those screws down, especially if you have a big leak. Uh, like like the one I had which was revealed with soap water now the rest of this video is going to be me uh, struggling to put this back together after I erroneously took it all apart and it exploded with springs and things under pressure and caused all sorts of trouble so my compressor has been leaking for years it runs constantly and it, and it never really gets to top pressure it's hard to, to get full strength out of the you know pneumatic tools and whatnot all right i have a soap water mixture you see where it's leaking from it's leaking from all around where this uh electric part meets this metal part okay <laughs> so you can see we got major leaks in the uh the the air pressure switch uh I think there's probably just a little diaphragm in there that we can replace. Let's take this apart and get a closer look. The operation of this is pretty straightforward. So, uh, you know, the power comes in here and it, it goes down to the back side. So the back side's hot. And then the, the front side is what's connected to the motor. And when you flip the switch, it, uh, it opens and closes the little electric, you know, this is like a solenoid, right? So it opens and closes the contacts, sending power to the thing. But these are held in with a T20 torque. So let's, uh, let's take this off. Let's just have a little quick peek. Oh my God. Okay, this is a shit show. Do not take those torques out. So once you get to the back, you find this uh, this uh, springy thing, and it'll just explode out. So the uh, the mechanism for for actuating this uh, was pretty tight. Okay, now I got to see if I can save the day. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, little air solenoid so I can get some space to work on this thing. See if I can't get it back together. What a mess! <laughs> <laughs> oh god so this little diaphragm is in between the contact switches and and so how does that work so we have the pressure comes in from the tank it goes to the blow off valve to the output and to the whatever that is and so this thing this thing would swell I guess it, it swells up and it pushes out and then it makes contact on on the back of this little thing and then somehow that moves it enough where it can break that connection with the uh, the contacts and turn the compressor off <clears throat> this uh, look at this this thing doesn't have any obvious holes in it I might have been able to fix this just by tightening up those torques I took out. Uh, gosh, but this is a real, this is a nightmare I'm trying to get this thing back together. Oh, this is going to suck. It's going to be tricky for sure. Uh, so, so the back part sits in these little grooves. And then this section here sort of stays over here but then it's gonna slide around maybe so okay we're gonna hook this to that have it sitting there then I'm gonna hold that there I'm gonna twist that around get it in place a lot of pressure right there. I'm going to 
stretch that back okay let's see let's see how it functions as the pressure's pushing it in it trips off the trips on trips off trips on you see that so that's the function that this thing has oh man look at that Ugh. so how do you hold that in place oh see it just popped out of my fingers so how do you hold that tension in place while you reinstall this thing without it exploding off hmm so you could take some of the pressure off you could you could back the screw out however many turns that is take some of the pressure off there ooh replacing the diaphragm on these isn't the easiest <laughs> maybe I should watch a tutorial instead of trying to struggle through one okay so let's see if, the, if that spring pressure was lower And you're carrying that thing. Yeah, you just gotta maintain some sort of constant pressure. Okay, this project has quickly uh, spiraled out of control. Um, I'm just gonna see if I can put it back together. So, let's get this thing in place. Okay, so that thing, that's, that's how it needs to ride. I'm going to take the pressure off this let's see which way it goes down okay that's up so counterclockwise takes the pressure off let's go half one one half two two half three three half about three and a half turns I can see uh, I can see why someone would just buy a new uh, pressure switch and all that versus trying to replace a diaphragm it might be screwed <laughs> oh god, everything's falling out. <gasps> so I'm going to assemble this thing with, with this spring uh, completely loose. And then I'm also going to keep uh, this spring right here disconnected. And then I'm going to try to hook it with a wire and, and uh, pull it. Oh man, my wire doesn't even fit in there. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to figure some way to get a wire in there. And then, once I'm in there, I'm going to see if I can't, if, well, let's see, let's just see if this wire is strong enough. And then with this wire, I'm just going to give it a big yank, hook it on, and then try to get that wire out. Yeah, yeah, so this, this thin wire here is strong enough to stretch that. Okay, so that, that's, that's the current plan. We'll see how that goes. So let's dangle that in there. The lever seems to be in place. Okay, okay. So that's in the on position. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Line up that gasket. Go ahead and let's at least get one of these in place. I'm looking through the bolt holes. Oop, I moved it. Okay. Okay, that looks like it's in position. I'm shaking. I'm shaking. Oh god, I just wiggled the whole thing. Now it still looks like it's in place. Okay. Okay. Got that one started. Let me start another corner. Oh, oh god. Okay. No promises. Okay. So let's build the little hook thing now. So I got this really thin uh, belling wire. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna leave it long. Okay, so now I have a thing that I could maybe hook, hook onto. 
see what happens. I'm going to use this piece of belling wire to kind of manipulate the spring I'm trying to grab. Hold it steady. I'm going to use this one. Let's see. Almost. Well, I sure hope you all can see that. I finally, I finally managed to get this piece of wire hooked to that spring. And uh, it wasn't easy. So I'm going to stretch that spring. Let's see if I can get it to hook. Hmm. I might have to go in with little tools to help manipulate it. Doing microsurgery. <laughs> Oh, I almost have it. Okay. Okay. Right there. Oh my God, I got the spring on. So now I got to figure out how to get this wire off. I think I can. Okay. Where's my nippers? <laughs> I'm going to try to get in there real short. Whoa. Okay, that might be back together. Remember, I haven't actually replaced anything. Uh, I'm just going off the idea that these screws had vibrated loose and uh, give it miss aluminum so you can't go too tight. I'm just gonna tighten everything down just a little. Just kind of firmly, but not to the point I strip anything out. But hook it back together. Let's see if it leaks. So it's all hooked back together, it's plugged in. Uh, we got some live power here. This screw is still loose. There's no tension on it. Um, so it probably will shut off at low pressure maybe with it all the way down. Let's just see, let's just build pressure, see what happens. Yeah, it, it shut off at 75 PSI. Interesting. So that means if I turn this, I should be able to kick it back on. Let's just crank this puppy up back to 120 PSI where it was. Oops. Okay. So apparently it cannot actually uh, do 120 PSI. It blew off right before 120. Um, what's it say? Oh, it says it's a 115 blow off valve. Okay. Uh, we'll back it down a little bit. Try again. I guess it was getting up that high previously because it was leaking pressure out of there. And uh, I mean, it just run continuously. I mean, it wouldn't shut off. So that, that's why, that's part of the reason, besides having a leak, that's why it was running so much. Cool. Okay, I uh, I turned this down to about one. Uh, if this gauge is accurate, it's at 111 psi, uh, so it can't go to 120. That's good to know. I hear a very slight leak. Okay, it's it's leaking just a teeny little bit. Okay, back with the soap water. Let's just see what we can find. Okay, the blow-off valve is leaking just a little. Cool. Oh. Oh. Maybe it's still a little hot. <laughs> okay, let's see. Are we still leaking in there? So we're at the limits of this old blow-off valve. Maybe that should be replaced at some point. But, do you see that? We do have a little bitty leak here still. I'm going to unplug it so I don't shock myself. Let's see if we can just tighten this just a bit more. Stop that. Oh, these are real tight.
don't know how much more I could do. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can stop that leak. Maybe I should have put some... Well, okay, what, what I should have done is replace the, uh, the diaphragm. Duh. <laughs> but maybe what I could have done is put a little bit of, like, gasket sealer on there. Or silicone. Maybe a little bit of grease. I don't know. Uh, anyways, this is, this is drastically improved. It'll actually cycle on and off. It's not leaking horrifically bad. Uh, that's, that's okay by me. I, I can, I can work with this until I actually need to, to replace something. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks for watching y'all. Ho hope this uh, helps you, um, uh, fix your compressors. Take it easy.